The conspiracy theorists have done it again. Apparently, 5G towers can cause everything from cancer to autism to infertility, and according to the theorists, now coronavirus. Let me break down six myths about 5G and coronavirus to show you why they have zero connection. Myth one, Wuhan was the first place in the world to get 5G in October last year, and then was the first place hit with the new coronavirus. That's not entirely true. South Korea was the first country to launch 5G in April of 2019. They didn't have their first COVID case until the 20th of January 2020. USA launched 5G in April of 2019. And also, they didn't have their first case until the 20th of January 2020. The UK launched 5G in May and then had their first case in the 31st of January 2020. China, on the other hand, got 5G in October of last year and Wuhan was one of only several cities in China to get 5G around this time. Yes, the COVID disease originated in Wuhan in November last year, but the spread of the virus can be clearly tracked. If 5G was the cause, then we should see COVID cases happening in the order that 5G was introduced. That means it should have started in South Korea. This is not the case, so there is no time association between 5G and COVID. Myth number two, COVID only affects countries that have 5G. No, this is not true. There are 34 countries in the world with 5G networks, and there are now more than 210 countries and territories in the world with COVID cases. Iran is an example of a country where there is no 5G and a lot of COVID cases. So there is no geographical association between COVID and 5G. Myth three, countries with more 5G towers have more cases of COVID. False again. South Korea has the highest number of cities with 5G availability, 85, yet their COVID outbreak is pretty well controlled. This can be attributed to their aggressive early testing. USA, on the other hand, is much larger than Korea, but only has 50 cities with 5G capability, and their COVID outbreak is now the largest in the world. So there is no dose-response relationship between COVID and 5G. Myth four. 5G towers spread viruses via radio waves and this causes the symptoms. This 5G stuff is really giving me a headache. So viruses are infectious particles that attach to and invade cells in order to take over the cell machinery. They then use the cell machinery to create more copies of themselves which then infect other cells in the vicinity. In this process the cell is damaged and can die. This leads to inflammation and immune response, which causes release of all sorts of immune chemicals. Viruses have been studied extensively for the last 100 years, and you can actually observe cells changing and dying in response to a viral infection through a microscope. 5G, on the other hand, is just a computer networking system. There's no link between 5G and a virus. Myth five. 5G radiation causes similar symptoms to a COVID illness, shortness of breath and headache. That's because 60 gigahertz radiation is being absorbed by the oxygen and this impairs the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin. This is just not true. Number one, there are no 5G networks that use 60 gigahertz frequency at this time. Most networks are using frequencies around the 3.5 gigahertz range. It's true that the 60 gigahertz photons are absorbed by oxygen molecules because that is one of the frequencies that can cause a change in the rotational state of oxygen in the gas phase. However, this is also the reason that 60 gigahertz frequency is not being used by any network at this time. That's because the signal is rapidly lost in only a short distance. Even if 60 gigahertz frequency was being used, the change in the rotational state of oxygen would only be observed for a fraction of a second as the energy would quickly be dissipated into the surrounding air. In addition, only one out of the trillions and trillions of oxygen molecules in the air would be affected by this. So there is no plausible biological mechanism for 5G causing the symptoms of COVID. Last one, myth six. Okay, so maybe 5G doesn't cause coronavirus, but it's still harmful to our health. There is no evidence that 5G or radio frequency EMF exposure is harmful. So both 5G and visible light are made up of photons. 5G technology uses frequencies that can go up to 95 gigahertz. And visible light is made up of photons that have a frequency 10,000 times higher in the 400 to 800 terahertz range. 
And so the energy per photon is also a corresponding 10,000 times higher. Even the energy per photon in visible light is much lower than the energy required to knock electrons off atoms, you know, the process of ionization and DNA damage, etc. In addition, we are exposed to a tremendous amount of visible light radiation along with infrared and UV radiation every day from the sun, which is probably millions if not billions of times higher than any radiation that we would receive from 5G technology. In addition, high frequency 5G wavelengths penetrate less than a millimeter of the skin. The thickness of the dermis is an average of two millimeters, which means that these photons do not penetrate past our skin. We are also constantly exposed to natural radio frequency radiation from the universe called cosmic microwave background radiation. This is basically the static that you used to see on your TVs if you weren't tuned into a channel.